In this section, we will define a system, examine system resistant curves, so the head required by the process, and define the operating point of a compressor. Again, the principles discussed can be applied to a pump operating in a system. A system is a set of connected things or parts that work together. In a typical process, a set of components like vessels, exchangers, furnaces, control valves and piping work together to produce a resistance to the flow at the centrifugal compressor flanges. When you examine a simple system, you can see that any process system relative to the compressor is comprised of two parts, the suction system and the discharge system. The objective of any centrifugal compressor in a system is to remove the flow from the suction vessel at the same rate that the flow enters that vessel. In doing so, the pressure is reduced from the suction vessel to the compressor flanges. In the discharge system, the objective is to push the required amount of flow through the system resistance to achieve the final discharge system terminal pressure. This pressure may be in a vessel, may be in a ship, or could be in a pipeline. The discharge pressure at the compressor flange is therefore the accumulation of the system resistance from the terminal point or delivery point back to the compressor discharge flange. An important point to remember here is that the compressor differential head or energy required by the system is the net effect of the discharge system resistance and suction system resistance. Increasing discharge system resistance with a constant suction resistance will result in higher compressor energy required. Also, increasing suction system resistance with a constant discharge system resistance will result in increasing compressor energy required. Many times the concept of increasing suction system resistance or suction throttling is misunderstood. This will be discussed in details in this section. Now, if we review the previous section and examine the operation of both positive displacement and dynamic compressors in a simple system, two important facts concerning the operation of these machines in a system become evident. A positive displacement compressor, since it increases the energy of the gas by operating on the gas in a confined space, will always increase the energy provided sufficient power is available and the machine is designed to meet this objective. Therefore, a positive displacement compressor will be relatively insensitive to gas composition changes. In addition, since the positive displacement compressor, as previously defined, has variable head capability, it will be relatively insensitive to system changes. As a result, a positive displacement compressor will operate at approximately the same delivered volume flow, regardless of system resistance or gas composition. On the other hand, since the characteristics of a dynamic compressor are to increase gas energy, which is a function of mass and velocity by working on the gas with blades, then velocities and gas mass play an important part in the makeup of this compressor's characteristics. Anything that will result in a velocity or density change at the tip of the dynamic compressor blade will result in a different produced differential pressure and the corresponding flow change. Therefore, the dynamic compressor will be extremely sensitive to gas composition changes since these changes will produce mass and velocity changes within the compressor blades or impellers. In addition, this compressor type will also be sensitive to system resistance changes, since an increased system resistance requirement will force the compressor to operate at a lower volume throughput. This is because the only way this compressor can produce higher delivered energy is at a lower velocity throughput. Therefore, we can readily see that the operating point of a dynamic compressor will be much more sensitive to both changes in system resistance and the velocities inside the impeller. 
both system resistance and the dynamic compressor curve can change when plotted on flow versus pressure coordinates. As it will be explained further ahead, flow versus head coordinates reflect a dynamic compressor which changes very little provided that the gas composition changes within the limit of 20%. The compressor operating point can be defined as the equilibrium between the required net process system energy and the compressor produced energy. Remember that the positive displacement compressor characteristic results in relative constant flow regardless of system required energy. On the other hand, the dynamic compressor characteristics result in a significant large flow changes for changes in system resistance. One additional point to understand is that the process system characteristic curve can also change. Now, the system resistance curve, which represents the head required by the process, is a result of the terminal pressure, that is, the discharge pressure at zero flow, and the system resistance as the flow changes. A recycle loop, for instance, is comprised of friction loss only, and will have a relatively steep system resistance curve. On the other hand, an instrument air compressor pumping into a receiver vessel with a relatively small system resistance will have a system resistance curve that will approach a horizontal line. As you will see further ahead, the combination of a flat dynamic compressor curve and a flat system resistance curve can lead to a very unstable situation. Remember that the operating point is determined by the intersection of a compressor and system resistance curves as depicted here. For centrifugal compressors, both of these curves can change and will certainly do. The definition of a process system is seen here. It is a set of connected things or parts that work together. In our case, a set of components like vessels, exchangers, furnaces, control valves and piping work together to produce a resistance to flow at the compressor flanges. The process system characteristics and the gas composition determine the head required by the process system. A simple process system schematic is presented here. We will be using this simplified process schematic extensively in this course to illustrate many of the dynamic compressor concepts. Take a look at the following figure. The first curve you see here is called the compressor curve. It shows the head produced by the compressor as a function of flow. This curve corresponds to a dynamic compressor since it shows a decreasing head for an increasing flow. The second curve is the system resistance curve. In other words, the head required by the process system as a function of the compressor flow. In our example here, this second curve intersects the compressor curve at the design point corresponding to 100% flow. This point of intersection is also known as the operating point. The operating point will be covered in details in the next video. In the next figure, two different system resistance curves representing two different process systems are shown. The curve starting at zero differential pressure represents a process system where only system resistance is present. In this case, when the compressor is shut down, the pressure in the system is zero. This would be typically the system resistance curve that would describe a recycle process. The second curve that starts at 50 PSI differential pressure shows that the pressure differential of 50 PSI exists when the compressor is shut down in the system. This process system would be typical of a system in which both vessel pressure and system resistance are present. 
You can see from this figure that the higher the percent of vessel pressure in the process system, the flatter the system resistance curve is. System resistance characteristics for the three basic types of process systems are presented here. They include friction-only process systems, high terminal pressure systems, and intermediate pressure systems. A typical example of a friction-only process system could be a compressor in a recycle loop. For high terminal pressure systems, it could be an instrument air compressor. And for a high pressure system, it could be a off gas compressor. Notice here that the steepest curve, the one corresponding to a compressor in a recycle loop, will result in the most stable operation, regardless of the compressor curve shape. A compressor in a high terminal pressure system, like an instrument air compressor, will have a curve that tends to be very flat due to high terminal pressure in the discharge vessel. This system will experience instability if the compressor characteristic curve is flat. What I want you to understand and appreciate here with these examples is that a compressor with a flat characteristic curve is not always good for your process. In my professional experience, many times a dynamic compressor has not been considered technically acceptable for purchase simply because of a relatively flat head curve that could cause the process system to experience instability. So my advice to you, if your process system that the compressor will operate in is either type 1, friction only, or type 3, then this compressor should be considered acceptable based on the fact that the process system steadily rising head characteristic curve will provide a stable operating point. The following figure shows that the compressor curve selected is based only on a single operating point specified by the client. Industry specifications only require that one operating point be guaranteed. Therefore, the compressor curve shape is never guaranteed. The operating point is defined as the equilibrium condition that exists between the head produced by the compressor and the head required by the process system. It is determined by the intersection of the compressor and system resistance curve. Remember, both of these two curves can change and will certainly do. Now, take a look at the following graph. It shows a typical dynamic compressor curve, so decreasing head versus increasing flow, its corresponding efficiency curve, and brake horsepower curve. And here, an example of a system resistance curve. Recall that the intersection with the head capacity curve of the compressor gives the operating point. If the process conditions that actually exist are properly specified, and if the equipment is properly selected, the operating point will occur at the best efficiency point, BEP. The additional blue curve that you can see here is a system resistance curve corresponding to a case where the head required by the process is greater than the head produced by the compressor at the rated point. The result, as it can be seen here, is that the equilibrium point falls to the left of the best efficiency point, resulting in a lower efficiency, lower brake horsepower, and a lower flow rate. This is the simplified process scheme that we used in a previous video to plot the head capacity curve for a positive displacement compressor. Recall that a positive displacement compressor delivers a constant volume flow and is not self-limiting, meaning that the head capacity curve will be a vertical line as depicted here. 
Now, referring back to the three basic types of process systems seen in the previous lecture, which are for reminder, friction only, high terminal pressure, and intermediate, we can plot the three system resistance curves on the pressure ratio versus flow graph as seen here. Notice that regardless of the change of resistance, the flow rate of a positive displacement compressor does not change. In our case here, it remains constant at 500 cubic feet per minute. In addition, the flow rate will remain constant regardless of the density of the gas. Recall that a positive displacement compressor delivers a constant volume, has a variable head capacity, is not self-limiting, not flow sensitive to system resistance as seen here, and not flow sensitive to gas density. In our simplified process scheme, let's replace the positive displacement compressor by a dynamic compressor with the following characteristics. The head capacity curve in the form of a vertical line that you can see here, very representative of a positive displacement compressor, will therefore have the following shape. So, a decreasing head with an increasing flow, as for any dynamic compressor. Let's now plot the three system resistance curves on the pressure ratio versus flow graph for the basic types of process systems. Observe now and appreciate how these system resistance curves affect the operating point of our dynamic compressor. As it can be seen here, the higher the head required by the process, the lower the flow rate delivered by the dynamic compressor. Now we can state the following. Any dynamic compressor delivers a variable volume has a fixed head capacity, is self-limiting, is flow-sensitive to system resistance, and flow-sensitive to gas density.